Hey guys, I hope you had a really good Christmas and New Year. Um, I hope everyone got what they wanted and I know a lot of people have got a new uh, DSLR for Christmas or for their holidays. And I've had loads and loads of questions over the last couple of weeks um, from people new to photography um, about aperture, shutter speed and ISO. Now I've touched upon all these things in my previous videos um, but I've never really gone into great detail about them. Uh, I'm going to try today to explain aperture as basically as I can um, but while still giving enough detail to sort of get your head around it. Um, at first it sounds so complicated and it's quite a hard thing to sort of get your head around so um, using the lens you see in front of you and a couple of pictures later I shall try my best to explain to you how and uh, how to use your aperture and what it actually does. Okay, so first of all, what is aperture? When we talk about aperture, and you'll often see all these numbers on your lenses, what we actually mean by aperture is the hole inside your lens. And that hole in the lens, which you can see at the back of the lens there, that lets a certain amount of light into the camera through the front element through all the other elements in the lens and then into the sensor. Now we can change this, um, the size of the hole, by changing our aperture number. On this lens I can do it manually and you can see there as I move it that hole gets a lot bigger and a lot smaller. So when we talk about aperture we're talking about that hole in the back of the lens and how much light it lets through. Now these numbers are actually uh, an equation, a mathematical equation, which I'm not going to go into because you don't really need to know it at this point. So if we look closely on this lens, you can see I've got a load of numbers listed here. I've got 1.4, 2, 2.8, and it goes all the way up to 22. So these are the F numbers. You'll often see them on your lens um, with an F in front of them and maybe a slash as well. So when someone talks about f1.4 they're on about this number here 1.4 or they might say f11 f11 there so let's put our lens that I've got here onto f1.4 you can see this line here is in line with f1.4 what has that done to the hole inside the lens if we have a look it's made it massive it's a great big hole so that is going to let in loads and loads of light into our camera so what effect does that have on our pictures? Well letting in loads of light will mean we can get a faster shutter speed which means we can capture action much better. You'll get a really sharp photo of something moving. So why don't we leave it on that all the time because obviously we want sharp photos. Well everything in photography is a trade-off. There's always some sort of compromise. And the compromise with having a wide open hole like that is the amount that's in focus is very very small. The wider this hole, the less is in focus. So let's start from the basics again. A small hole is a narrow aperture. It doesn't let in very much light. A narrow aperture is what we would call f22, f16, f11, f8, even f5.6. When we say a wide aperture, we mean a big hole. That can be anything from f1.4, f2, f2.8, again even up to 5.6 depending on your lens. So, big hole, low number, tiny hole, big number. That's the most confusing part of aperture. It's the other way around. So a big number equals a small hole. Okay, so once you've got that in your head, you can start thinking about what effects this has on your photos. As I just said, a really big hole lets in loads of light, but the sacrifice is not very much of the picture is going to be in focus. So on the opposite end of that, a really small hole like this, f22, it's not going to let in very much light at all, but loads is going to be in focus. When we talk about things being in focus and out of focus, 
We're not necessarily talking about things being blurry because of motion blur or shake. We're talking about the depth of field. Now the depth of field means the areas of the photo that are sharp from front to back. And depth of field can be drawn on a picture and I'll show you now. You have to excuse me because my drawing is not very good at all. But let's just say we've got a person in our photo. Now we want this person to be fully in focus. So our camera is down here. And we want all of this person to be in focus. Now if I chose an aperture of f1.4 and focused on this person, only a tiny bit of them would be in focus. So if I focused on their eyes, only their eyes would be in focus. The rest of them would be blurry. Their nose, their ears, all the way to the back of their head. So to get all of that person in focus, I need to choose a slightly narrower aperture or bigger number. So I choose something like f8, which would then make all of this person in focus. When we talk about being in focus, when we talk about depth of field, what we're talking about is the focal plane. The focal plane can be drawn very much like a wall. So this is the focal plane. It's always perpendicular with the camera and it's always completely parallel. Now obviously on a flat picture I can't draw it properly but imagine looking this way at that person. This is in front and this is behind the person. The wider the aperture the smaller this line is going to be. So if I chose 1.4 the line might be somewhere down here. Then only this section would be in focus. As I close down my aperture, in other words, make the hole smaller and choose a bigger number, this extends, so then more and more will be in focus. So when you're thinking about depth of field, remember this wall of focus, or this focal plane. It moves as you change your aperture. So if you want more in focus, choose a bigger number, a smaller hole. Now, if you've got your camera with you, I want you to do a little experiment. Set up something like I've got here, some batteries, pencils, anything really. A ruler would be really helpful as well. What I want you to do is on your camera set a low aperture so the widest you can go. If you're using a kit lens it will be something like f3.5 uh, but just get the lowest you can and I want you to be in aperture priority mode here. So this is my D700 and I'm going on the lowest aperture I can. I'm in aperture priority. The lowest aperture I can go is f4. Again yours might be a little bit different but just keep going till you get to the lowest. What I then want you to do is step back a little bit and focus on this closest battery that you've set up or your pencil or whatever. Take the picture and then have a look at it on the screen. You see that this should be perfectly in focus but then these two won't be in focus. You'll also see if you've got a ruler set up that there'll be a tiny bit in focus mainly probably from the 12 maybe up to about the 10 and a half. What I wanted to do now is focus on the centre battery. You might have to move it across a bit so you can get past it. You're shooting this way down the ruler. What you'll now see is that this battery is out of focus, this battery will be out of focus, this one will be in focus and you should clearly see on the ruler the depth of field. You'll probably see from about the 5 to about the 7. Again focus on the furthest battery and take the picture. Now both of these will be out of focus. Now what I want you to do is on your camera close down your aperture to about f11. You'll need quite a lot of light for this so do it in a bright place or if you can't get a really bright place use a tripod so your camera is steady. 
So at F11, again I want you to do the same. Take a picture of the middle battery, take a picture of the closest battery, and take a picture focused on the furthest battery. You'll see, especially with the middle one, that both the front and the back batteries will now be a bit more in focus. They might not be perfectly uh, crisp and clear, but they'll be a lot more in focus than what you had before at the widest aperture. If we remove the batteries and just use the ruler, that makes it really easy to see. Shoot down about the angle that I've got this ruler at on the camcorder. So you'll be stood here shooting down the ruler. Be a bit higher so you're looking down at it. Choose a number to focus on on the ruler. I'm going to choose 7. So put your middle focus point over the 7 and take a picture at F11 and then close down your aperture or make it wider in this case and go to your widest aperture take a picture and have a look at the differences. You'll see at the F11 there's a lot more front and back that's in focus and as you close down the aperture to the widest you'll see that gets a lot smaller. Now that wall will be parallel and will shift depending where you focus. So if you focused on the 11, you'd have a wall down here by the 11. If you focused on the 3, you'd have a wall up here on the 3. And as you adjust your aperture, that wall will get wider and shift with you. So try that little experiment and see if that helps you uh, grasp the concept of aperture and depth of field. I'll show you on the computer now some photos that I've taken at different apertures and you can see the differences that uh, you can get with the different aperture effects.